Hey everyone, this is my first video in a while, and today I actually want to talk about not exactly modularization, but uh, using PSR4 on our projects and leveraging namespaces to make our code prettier and more readable and easier to maintain. So I'm just taking off my headphones because they're pressing against my ear. <laughs> so I have this fresh Laravel install. Um, it's here. And uh, it's here and I want to, let me just close this. I want to show you guys how I usually work on my projects. Um, we usually have big projects where, where we have kind of apps within the app. So perhaps you have a very complex dashboard that has a lot of its own stuff. So its own services, uh, its own notifications, its own mailables, sometimes even models that are only relevant to this particular uh, feature. So what we usually do is we keep stuff within the app namespace, the app folder. So perhaps you have a, a dashboard stuff. So you usually put your stuff on something like app, um, HTTP controllers, dashboard, and you put your controllers there. So something like it's P controllers dashboard, so perhaps um, users controller, something like that. I like this approach. It works great for uh, small to medium sized projects, but sometimes you have to work with, uh, I like to call this modularization. Um, some people may think I'm talking about TDD. Um, I would say my, my, my approach is based on DDD, but uh, it's very far from, from, from what DDD actually, uh, actually promotes. So let's work with the, the dashboard case. We have a very complex dashboard. It's, it has its own services, uh, perhaps its own models, its own notifications, all that stuff, its own middlewares. Basically everything we have within the app namespace. It's on exceptions. It's basically an app within the app. What I like to do is everything that's global stays within the app folder. So the user model is global. We're gonna use it on the dashboard. So it stays here. Um, generic stuff like uh, user register notification on login uh, register, I like to keep here. So what I like to do is I first create a folder called dashboard and I create a file because I'm done. <laughs> Let me change this. I, I don't know how to create this. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, new folder dashboard. Within this folder, the first thing I like to add is a service provider. On this service provider, we are going to register our views, uh, our views path. So we're not going to start views here on resources. We are going to start right here. So um, I would do something like dashboard providers, dashboard service provider. So we have the service provider. Let me open this. If we go to our app service provider, we can just copy this. And of course, we will change the namespace. So dashboard providers and dashboard service provider. Great. So now let me close this. If we go to our terminal and we do tinker and if we try to instantiate this dashboard providers, dashboard service provider, you may notice that there's no class called dashboard service provider. That's because we haven't registered this namespace. So what can we do? We have to go to our composer, oops, file. And right here we have the auto loader. We are auto loading the app namespace within the app folder. So we want to auto load the dashboard namespace within the dashboard folder. Of course, we will dump the autoloader. So if we do this now, 
we have a, an unresolvable dependency. Okay, but now the class exists. So we can go back here. So right now on the boot method, we have the load views from method. We can specify path and a namespace. So what we want to do is we want to load views from base path. So we are on the root. We want to go to dashboard, um, perhaps something like views. And we want to give it a namespace. So when we want to load this view, we'll write something like namespace to trillion dots and the, the view name. So perhaps app. Let's call it dashboard and save this. Okay, now we have the service provider kind of set up, but I also want to make a, a route service provider. So let's write this up. And if we if we just copy it from our main service, our main root service provider. Whoops, I freaked up. Okay, root service provider. Um, we are extending the root service provider. Let's change the namespace to dashboard slash providers. So our main namespace, our, our root namespace for our controllers is gonna be dashboard HTTP controllers. So we don't really want to do anything on the boot method. So let's just leave it here. And right now we don't have API routes. So um, let's just leave the map web routes here. So yeah, we want to give it a middleware web to this namespace. That's our root namespace. And we want to get the routes within dashboard slash routes slash web. Okay. So let's create this file, dashboard routes web. So I'm gonna do earlier route call. And of course, we actually wanna live, we actually wanna have a prefix called dashboard. So we don't have to write dashboard everywhere here. We would have to write uh, this here if we didn't have it. So if I type dashboard, it's not going to work. Let me show you guys. And why it's not working? Because we haven't registered these providers. To do this, we're going to go to our config slash app file. If we go down here, we have several providers of the application. So first of all, let's register the dashboard service provider. Okay, and let's register its route service provider. So if we do root list, we now have the dashboard group. Now, if I remove this, it's not here. So it works. All we are doing is using auto loading to do this kind of magic. So. We say that we want everything within the dashboard folder to have the dashboard namespace, root namespace. And here we are creating two service providers, one that just load the views. We just specify a path and uh, a namespace and one that just registers its routes. So uh, we actually have to create this file, a file on view, so dashboard views. Let's just do a index. Let's do it's working. Now, if I go here and do return view dashboard index, let's see what happens. It's working. Now, if I remove this, the view was not found. We don't have a hint path to find for dashboard. And okay, so we already have a lot done. You can see that uh, we already have this way more organized. Of course, we don't have many files here, so it's hard to, to give an example. But uh, imagine we want to add several controllers. So perhaps we'll have a user's controller, a, I don't know, a properties controller, everything of a dashboard. 
We could even have API routes here. We have everything separated. So perhaps you have a dashboard module, um, you have an admin module uh, for the owners of the website, um, you have a news uh, module, stuff like that. And now I wanna actually talk about tests. So there are two approaches to having the test folder. The first of all is just keeping everything on test. So if you wanna do perhaps a, uh, you, you wanna have a test for something within the dashboard module, you can do something like test dashboard. So um, if it's a unit test unit, if it's a feature test feature, um, a, I don't know, um, something like um, send notifications test. Or perhaps um, what I usually do is I usually have the tests follow the um, the class I'm testing path. So I would have something like test dashboard, HP controllers, um, users, uh, I don't know, um, send notification test, push controller test. Or if it's, a, if it's a, I don't know, a, a service test, I would have something like dashboard services uh, user service test something like that another option is to have the test the tests within the dashboard folder so we would have something like dashboard tests and I don't know let's say a unit um, uh, user test or something specific to the dashboard let's think uh, it's really hard to think on this <laughs> when I'm actually recording but uh, let's just do proper test, something like that. And I would have, of course, to define the namespace. So test on dashboard, tests, unit, um, proper test. So right now we have to extend the test case. I usually like to have separate test cases for each uh, module as they have their specific stuff. All of them, of course, extend the base test case. So I would have something like dashboard tests, um, dashboard test case. So let's give it its namespace, dashboard test case, extends test case. So where is it? Okay. So we have a dashboard test case, which extends the test case. And we can have dashboard specific stuff here. So perhaps um, the user we need is actually an admin. So we, uh, I'm not an admin, but someone that has access to the dashboard. So we could say something like user, um, factory user state. Uh, we can say something like uh, uh, is admin. Let's say something like that. We could do it here and this would only apply to tests that extend this class. So only dashboard tests. And after we do this, let me show you something. I'm not sure if I saved this file, the file, let me, okay, I saved it. So um, let's do a quick test here. So it says something. Um, it's a really dumb test. But I'm, I want to show you something. If I run PHP unit here, and I'm not sure why it's not working. Oh, I have a different global version. You can see that our only two tests have been run. And it's one here and one here. So if I delete them, both of them, you guys are going to see that uh, this test isn't running. Why? That's because we have to register this on the PHP unit file. So we have to create a test suite. So let's do a test suite called um, test suite called um, dashboard. Let's do a directory. Just dashboard tests, and of course the suffix will be test.php. And I don't know what's that. Oh, okay. No, I saw. Oh, okay. I was missing this. And now the test is running. So basically we have to add the, the namespace to the PSR4 auto loading. 
dump the auto loader so it knows we have this and then we have to decide are we going to put the tests here on the root test folder or are we going to put the tests within the module i usually go um i usually put it here i have a folder called dashboard and leave everything here but i've seen people do it here and i think both of them are good um so after that we also have to register the providers which we have here on the config slash app file we have our roots file and we have our views here so um what we would usually see here is something like we would have a what do we create a folder i want to create a folder okay complex services and we would have something like notifications and I'm not sure why it was not created let me check I think I did something wrong and I created it here let's move it <laughs> um, so we would have a mailables something like that we would have repositories all related to this module everything related to this module would stay within this folder everything that's generic or that's not exactly a module it's the main app sometimes i, I do keep the main uh i don't want to say app but um I, i'm i imagine we each module is a app within the app a sub app let's call it let's call it like that i would have the main sub app like what the user faces or something here and uh specific stuff like a dashboard or um, any specific API for, for uh, I don't know, for a feature, I would have it here. So I think that basically covers it. Um, we do have a few drawbacks here. Um, people who are not, this is, this is, this isn't like, um, a common thing to do. Uh, I usually do it to my own taste. So sometimes people who join the project, um, they have to take their time to, to kind of learn where everything is. And uh, if you don't place things um, correctly, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So perhaps you have something that's global, but uh, you put it on the dashboard namespace, but you are also using it on the generic namespace and also on another module it can get messy so you have to think about about before using it um but anyway this is just how i do things this is not a a, a, in a specific pattern or uh the right way to do it there are many ways to do it some people don't like this some people like this some people are going to say this is shit that it is this is crazy this is um bad code I personally like it. I think that you can build a very well structured app um, using this. Um, some people don't, and that's okay. Each uh, each one has their own taste. So um, I hope you guys like this video. I plan to do a, an, an article. Um, it's easy I th for me, at least. It's easier to write about this kind of stuff and give detailed explanations. Um, so I do plan to write an article about a blog post. Uh, a long blog post about this subject. I hope this video um, helped you um, at least learn something or give you some inspiration or something. Of course, I want to include better examples. I will try to, to get some project examples um, and show you guys how, how they are structured. And of course, thank you for watching. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or my blog. My blog's kind of, uh, I haven't posted anything in like one year, but uh, I do plan to go back to to, to put it back online. And um, well, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.